Hi everyone, we're talking about a plant metabolite that has been used as a natural supplement for health benefits, and that is diendolomethane, or DIM for short. So we're going to talk about where we can get this plant metabolite. We'll also talk about some of the potential health benefits, and then later on we'll talk about some of the adverse effects of taking this natural supplement, especially when taking it at higher doses. So this particular plant metabolite is more specifically referred to as 3-3-prime diendolomethane, it is a metabolite of the phytochemical indole-3-carbonyl, or I3C, which is found in cruciferous vegetables. So a phytochemical is a chemical found in plants, and this particular indole-3-carbonyl is found in cruciferous vegetables, and cruciferous vegetables are going to be vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, and bok choy. And these vegetables also contain other phytochemicals, including sulforaphane. And the topic of this lesson is that there has been evidence that DIM has several important health benefits, and we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Let's first talk about indole-3-carbonyl. We talked about the fact that diendolomethane is a metabolite of this particular phytochemical. So indole-3-carbonyl, this is the structure of indole-3-carbonyl, when it enters into the stomach, it undergoes an acid condensation reaction. So it dimerizes into diendolomethane. So if you were to look at the structure here, we can actually see that it is two of those particular indole structures attached together. And this is actually diendolomethane, two of these indole-3 carbonyls attached together. So essentially when you've consumed indole-3 carbonyl from one of those cruciferous vegetables, it immediately will become dimerized into diendolomethane. And this is actually the metabolite that enters into our body. This is the one that gets into our bloodstream, whereas indole-3 carbonyl is not found in the bloodstream at all. So methane is the one that we're going to find in our body, and this is the one that's going to have particular effects we're going to talk about as we go through this lesson. The first set of effects we're going to talk about are endocrine effects, and these are the most well-known effects with regards to methane. So DIM has been demonstrated to have significant effects on hormone levels, and more specifically on estrogen hormones. This is where we're going to see many of the effects of this particular metabolite. And because of its changes in hormones, we can see that it has been also used as a supplemental treatment for polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS and other estrogen-related conditions. We'll talk about those as we go through this lesson as well. So there have been case reports that have noted significant improvements in PCOS symptoms, or we'll talk about those in, in a bit more detail later on. And some of the evidence we're going to look at in the upcoming slides come from this article entitled Hormonal Regulation in PCOS Using Acupuncture and Herbal Supplements, a Case Report and Review of the Literature. And also from this article, 3-3-prime diendolomethane modulates estrogen metabolism in patients with thyroid proliferative disease, a pilot study. Now from those studies and other studies, it's been found that DIM has biological and endocrinological effects more specifically. So we mentioned that DIM is the metabolite that actually enters into our body to have these effects. And when it gets into our body, it has particular effects on the estrogen receptor and on another receptor called aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Activation of aryl hydrocarbon receptor is one I want to focus on here. It actually leads to an increase in gene expression of CYP1A. So this is a cytochrome P450 enzyme, which ultimately leads to alterations in levels of estrogen hormones. And more specifically, it causes changes in particular estrogen hormones. So one of those effects is that it increases 2-hydroxyestrone, or 2-HE. And this particular estrogen is considered to have a lower affinity and a lower efficacy compared to other types of estrogen hormones. There is another estrogen hormone that it actually leads to a downregulation of, and that is 16-alpha, hydroxyestrone, or 16-AHE for short. This is considered a higher affinity and more potent estrogen. So diendolomethane, through its activation of aryl hydrocarbon receptor, leads to the increase in 2-hydroxyestrone and a decrease in 16-alpha hydroxyestrone. And essentially what this does is it leads to an increase in the ratio of these two estrogen hormones. So leads to an increase in 2-hydroxyestrone to 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone ratio. And another effect that it also has is on the aromatase enzyme. Now, aromatase enzyme is the enzyme that converts testosterone to estradiol. So diendolomethane actually acts to inhibit aromatase enzyme. So it essentially is leading to changes in the different types of 
estrogen hormones. So it's leading to higher levels of a lower affinity or lower efficacy estrogen and lower levels of a higher or more potent estrogen. And it's also leading to changes to estradiol formation in general. So these particular endocrinological effects are going to be very important in helping to resolve certain signs and symptoms and also reduce the risk of particular conditions that we'll discuss in more detail later on. Now with regards to PCOS and the symptoms of PCOS, we don't have a lot of data here. We don't have large trials looking at the effects of DIM on PCOS, but we do have some evidence from smaller studies, especially some case report studies. So not very strong, significant data, but some data. And that data does show that changes in estrogen signaling from DIM use can improve acne, can also lead to reduced hirsutism or hair growth, and also lead to or improve menstrual cycle regularization. Again, not very significant strong data, but there is some data that suggests that DIM can help with these signs and symptoms of PCOS. So those are some of the endocrinological effects of methane and its use in PCOS. Let's talk about cancer. Now there have been studies looking at methane as a potential preventative supplement for reducing risk of cancer. And some of the evidence we're going to look at come from these articles, one entitled anti-cancer effects of 3-3-prime methane on human hepatocellular carcinoma cells is enhanced by calcium ionophore, the role of cytosolic calcium ion and P38 MAPK. And in this article entitled Chemopreventive Properties of 3-3-prime methane in Breast Cancer Evidence from Experimental and Human Studies. So DIM use has been demonstrated to be associated with reduced risk of some types of cancer. So there is possible what we would call a chemopreventive effect. So some preliminary data showing that taking the supplement may reduce the risk of some cancers. So again, possible chemopreventive effect. And some of those cancers include breast cancer and other cancers like prostate cancer, endometrial cancer, thyroid cancer, and hepatic cancer. So a lot of these cancers have to do with alterations in levels of estrogen hormones. And more specifically, looking at that ratio we talked about before. So the ratio of 2-hydroxyestrone to 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone. So the improvement in cancer risk, again, appears related to DIM-induced effects on estrogen levels. And what has been noted is that what we would call the EMUR, which is the estrogen metabolite urine ratio. So you check the urine to see the ratio of these particular estrogen hormones we mentioned before. If you have a lower ratio of 2-hydroxyestrone to 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone, particularly less than 0.9. So if the ratio is less than 0.9, you're at a higher risk for some of these cancers like breast cancer. So when taking methane, because it acts to increase this particular ratio, this may be related to a reduction in risk of those particular estrogen-related cancers. And DIM may also have protective effects on breast cancer risk via other pathways and mechanisms. So this is again through the aryl hydrocarbon receptor mechanism. So aryl hydrocarbon receptor activation can lead to increases in the 2-HE to 16-AHE urine ratio, but it can also have other effects to reduce the risk of breast cancer as well. So some of these are important mechanisms to think about as they may lead to reduced risk of cancer in some cases. Let's talk about methane and obesity. So what we're going to talk about comes from this randomized control trial entitled Effectiveness of 3-3-prime methane Supplements on Favoring the Benign Estrogen Metabolism Pathway and Decreasing Body Fat in Premenopausal Women. So there has been evidence that DIM has beneficial effects on metabolism. It has been found that DIM supplementation was demonstrated to reduce percentage of body fat mass in premenopausal females. So in that particular study, premenopausal females took 75 milligrams of DIM per day for 30 days. So after 30 days of 75 milligrams of DIM per day, there was a significant reduction in percentage of body fat mass. Although this was a very small change, it was significant. And there was also a non-significant increase in 2-hydroxyestrone to 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone urine ratio at 60 days. So because it's at 60 days, it was actually 30 days after discontinuation. So even after the discontinuation of taking DIM supplements, they still had this residual effect afterwards where the ratio, that beneficial ratio we talked about before, continued to increase. So if the study had continued longer, it would have been interesting to see whether or not this ratio became significantly increased. 
So that's something to think about here. And DIM has been also noted to inhibit adipogenesis. So adipogenesis is the new formation of adipocytes, which are fat cells. And this comes from the article entitled 33 prime methane suppresses high fat diet induced obesity through inhibiting adipogenesis of preadipocytes by targeting USP2 activity. Also, diendol methane has been noted to have some antimicrobial effects as well. And some of the evidence we're going to look at here comes from this article entitled The Anti-Cancer Agent 33 Prime Diendol Methane Inhibits Multi-Species Biofilm Formation by Acne-Causing Bacteria in Candida albicans. So Cutobacterium or Propriobacterium acnes is a common bacterial inhabitant of the human skin and is believed to be a major cause of acne. So it's a bacteria that can cause acne. And it can also form biofilms with Candida albicans and Staphylococcus aureus. And from that study we just referred to, DIM was demonstrated to be effective at reducing biofilm formation by Cutobacterium acnes. This was an in vitro study, so it was done in cells in a Petri dish. So it's hard to extrapolate this into in vivo studies. But there was evidence that DIM had anti-biofilm activity. And then also from another study here, which looked at its antibiofilm activity and antimicrobial effects. DIM was also noted to have antibiofilm activity against Isinidobacter and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And along with antibiofilm activity against these particular bacteria, taking DIM supplements was also found to have wound healing benefits as well. So in that second study we referred to, they used in vitro studies to look at the biofilm activity against these particular bacteria, and they also used an in vivo study to look at the wound healing benefits. So from these studies, what we can note here is that DIM may have some antimicrobial effects, and especially it seems to have antibiofilm activity, so it may play beneficial roles in preventing the growth and proliferation of these particular bacterial species we mentioned here, and it may also have some wound healing benefits as well. Now, taking DIM supplements can cause side effects, especially in those who take high doses. Some of these side effects include darkened urine coloration. So your urine coloration may be darkened by taking DIM. A headache can also be a common side effect. And then another common side effect can be gastrointestinal upset, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Those signs and symptoms can occur in those who take DIM supplements, especially higher doses. Please check my lesson on the health benefits and risk of coffee and green tea. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.